So we're here at the Calzita. So who are you? Hi, I'm Carl Freund, VP of Marketing here at Calzada. So here at, uh, at Computex 2013, are you uh, having a press conference? Yeah, we have a press conference today. We're going to be talking about new enablement technologies, talking about our new team we have here on the ground in Taiwan and, and uh, China, as well as some new products that our partners are bringing to market specifically for the Asian markets. So bringing to market, that's kind of like a key kind of like sentence. Is it happening? Yes. Where yeah. and how? Absolutely. How these, these products are available now from these partners and um, they're focused on cloud computing, they're focused on web serving, focused on storage. Yeah. So you say available on the market, does it mean they're just like being introduced or they are? Just, be, just being introduced, yeah. Engineering just finishing up final testing. These are available this summer. So what is this? This one right here, this is by Aon. Uh, Aon has a product here that has 10 disk drives and, and two Calzada processor nodes, 10 gigabit ethernet out, dual 10 gig ethernet out. It's a very efficient, very um, power efficient and cost efficient storage device for cloud storage. Things like distributed storage, maybe open stack, things like that. Can you explain how it's uh, efficient compared to what's on the market otherwise? Yeah, today to really build a a, a server appliance, what you have to do is take the disk drives, take an uh, uh, x86 processor, put in a host bus adapter, perhaps a RAID controller, and all that adds cost and it all adds power and all adds space. What we do is, since ours is a system on a chip, all the, elect the electronics to control the disk drives are on that single chip. There are no other chips required to talk to the disk drive. In addition, there are no additional chips to talk to the outside world, specifically the network that's accessing this information over Ethernet. The Ethernet controllers and the fabric itself are all built onto that single chip. So lower chip count, lower cost, lower power. And, well, high, and higher bandwidth because it's a 10 gigabit uh, Ethernet uh, uh, controller. Typically on a, uh, an x86 device, a 10 gigabit controller is probably another $500. So it saves a lot of money. So you're saving money, you're saving power, and you say the performance is higher? The performance is higher if compared to a one gigabit x86 uh, um, storage device because this has dual 10 gigabit already built in. Think of it as free, free fat pipes. Would the x86 alternative look similar? It would, like it would, it would. You wouldn't have all this blank space here. Uh, there would be a single x86 processor with a uh, south bridge and uh, Ethernet NICs and a host bus adapter and the chips associated with the host bus adapter. So this empty space right here would all be electronics that cost money, that take up power. So how much money is saved? How much power is saved? You know, it, it typically what will happen is uh, depends on how many of these processors you want to put in. Because we're going to put two processors in instead of one. Uh, that gives us much higher bandwidth. So typically what we're saying here is you can get three times the bandwidth per dollar compared to an x86 storage array. Three times better. Three times better. All right. And uh, do you have showing other stuff? Yeah, sure. This is uh, another partner of ours. Of course, Foxconn is very well known, one of the largest companies in the world, uh, and one of the largest manufacturers of the world here in, in China. Uh, they have uh, uh, historically provided product to uh, large OEMs, uh, original equipment manufacturers. And in this case, they're providing products for some very large data centers. And these designs are available for OEMs to purchase and resell, or very large data centers to purchase it as well. What Foxconn has done here is take a very innovative design. This has got 60 three and a half inch disk drives that are connected to 12 um, Calzada SOCs. And then the 10 gigabit bandwidth story comes into play and we bring out lots of I.O. bandwidth coming out of the back of the device. So for every five disk drives, you have a dedicated SOC providing Linux an operating system and the control software, maybe you're running Ceph or something like that, to give distributed access for file access or block access for cloud storage. Sounds quite awesome. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing product. Amazing. Like, is it like never before seen anything similar? You know, there, how, does there, it, how, how do you explain there, it? There are, there are some x86 uh, devices out there, uh, a 4U chassis like this with uh, 60 uh, hard drives. Uh, they're fairly expensive, consume a lot of power, 
Um, uh, so this again, similar to the Aon product I mentioned, uh, it's all about lowering the power, lowering the cost, and at the same time providing increased ban uh, uh, networking bandwidth. So is it again three times better? What do you say? Yeah, it's probably about three times better. A lot depends on what software you're going to load on it. Uh, this can run on, on Fedora, this can run on uh, Canonical, uh, uh, Ubuntu. And what software you put on top of that is going to really determine what your actual throughput looks like. So uh, this is, again, three times lower cost per bandwidth. Yeah, it's a trick. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and how about uh, performance in getting the data through? You know, typically what happens is the performance is limited by the disk drive itself. The latency of the spinning media is the biggest uh, bottleneck. And so what happens is your processor, whether it's an ARM processor or an x86 processor, is waiting for the data to come around on the disk drive. Now the way you solve that problem with x86 is you put lots and lots of disk drives, which means you add more host bus adapters, more SATA controllers, right? Um, that adds cost, adds power. Uh, what we're doing here is sort of the opposite of that. We're saying let's just put the right number of processors to run in native mode that basically are well matched to the latency, rotational latency of the disk drives and uh, that's what allows you to get better performance without stacking a whole bunch of disk drives on a single processor. The other advantage is you have what's called a smaller failure domain. Um, not that anything would ever break in electronics world, but just in case something went down, uh, if you have a, you know, 60 disk drives connected to two x86 processors, um, that's a big failure domain. That's a lot of data that would be down if there's an issue. Here, the failure domain is, is, is one twelfth that, because uh, I'm going to have 12 of these processors for every five disk drives. So uh, what you're enabling at Calzita is, uh, if you walk over here, is, yeah. uh, it's a whole new bunch of uh, customizations that happen, right? That uh, like people can start like being clever about stuff, right? Yeah, they really can. I mean, we have different ways of working with customers. We can take our standard cards and simply bolt them together, put them onto a, a, uh, a system board and be able to get a product to market very quickly. Or they can do something that's customized for a particular workload um, and anything in between. So we have lots of different ways to help companies innovate on the ARM technology, get to market very quickly on a very stable and proven hardware platform. The chips that these uh, systems are based on has basically been in market now for nine months. So it's still relatively new technology, but nine months is a long time. Uh, in terms of getting a lot of operating system testing hours on this and getting up and running for production environments. Uh, it saves a lot of power. In this case, I've got uh, 24 servers in a 2U chassis, 24 SSDs. I'm running 24 copies of the calzada.com website. I've got a client that's injecting requests for web pages. Um, and that's what each of these represents is a URL coming out of the client hitting one of these web pages, okay, and this is kind of like the old Pong game, it, it's, it's responding to those and giving the data back over to the client. And uh, what we're doing here is showing that we're actually do doing that at less than 200 watts of total power, less than 8 watts per server. 24 servers, 24 SSDs, that's including power supply and fan, so that's measured at the wall. Uh, power at the wall is less than 8 watts per server. So a server expert would look at that and say, whoa, right? Yeah, he'd probably look at that and say, there's something wrong over here with your measurement device. There's no way a server can only consume 8 watts. Um, no but, way. Well, typically a server would be at 200 watts at least. Each? Yeah. I mean, so if you take a dual socket uh, x86 server, uh, it's going to be somewhere around 180 to 300 watts, depending on how it's configured, which which frequency bin you're running at. Uh, a non-tech, the well-respected uh, uh, um, technical evaluation uh, media outlet in Europe, they've done the evaluation of this and has concluded that this gives better performance at lower power than 24 virtual, mem vir virtual machines running on a reasonably high-end uh, Xeon processor. Nice, so now we're talking about uh you don't need to virtualize, you just do what yeah. you uh, Right now, there's no need to virtualize. As ARM gets more and more powerful in future generations, there'll be enough performance and headroom that you might want to virtualize. But for a system like this, virtualization is much more about management than it is carving up a processor space into smaller chunks. So instead, we'll just give you a smaller chunk that would be equivalent, roughly, to one VM. It's just a physical VM. 
but you can still use the, man the, the virtualization management to manage all of your um, provisioning and workload migration and so forth as virtualization technology comes to the ARM platform this summer. What do you have over here? This is somewhat similar, it's a slightly different platform, but it's just running our website, uh, calzada.com, which we do run on, uh, on our own product, running that on, on this small server. Um, these are some new cards that we've just, just introduced this week that have two nodes per, per card instead of our four nodes per card. Sometimes you don't need that much density for four nodes per card. So this is down to two nodes per card, but it also has the networking built onto the card. So the networking can scale with the compute. As you add more cards, you add more networking. And that's what this card is, is all about yeah. here. Can we show it with the light over here? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So that's the new card. That's you, the new card. You, what do you call it? We call it the Energy Card Two, two Node Board. And the not a very one? sexy name, but it's a pretty sexy card. The previous one? Yeah, that was the Four Node Board. All right. Both called Energy Card. And again, the difference here is I've got I've got these two these two transceivers on the back, so I can plug that directly into a 10 gigabit uh, t one or one to 10 gigabit Ethernet. So is that gives you a two. Think of this as a as a two node two, two socket server, right? So instead of a two-socket server being in a 2U chassis, um, you've got everything you need right here from, from baseboard management control to Ethernet to quad-core processors, cache. And on the back, I've got the SODIM, so I've got all the memory. So all the memory, and uh, because it's only two compared to four, does that mean it's cheaper? Or? Yeah, no, it's, you know what? It's probably about the same price per node. Uh, one of the advantages of this design is I can also run the SATA directly off these connectors. In the old design, as you see here in this photograph, uh, the old design, which is still a very nice design, the SATA is connected by connectors. Okay. And here, the SATA goes down to the system board, make, giving you a nice, clean, cable-free design, as you see on this chassis right here. So again, these are new enablement tools for our partners, our customers, to be able to quickly get to market, differentiate themselves in the market, provide more value to their customers based on how they're going about deploying this new ARM technology. So, uh, so how, how, Calzita, you say nine months? Uh, yeah, we've been shipping this for about nine months. So what is, uh, what's it called, uh, how many people are using this in the market? Uh, how, we've, how got, we've got server? roughly a hundred people right now uh, testing this and, and, and about, about a dozen people preparing to deploy it in production. Dozen people preparing to deploy? Yeah, deploy in production by the end of this year. And that could mean a huge amount of servers? We certainly hope so. And uh, when you say that as our processors get faster, has Calzida announced what's going to happen in the future? Yeah, we have. We've talked a little bit about our roadmap. The next thing that happens will be taking the ARM A Cortex A15 technology and putting it into the same sort of cards and devices in the same sort of SOC we're shipping today. SOC is a system on a chip. So our next SOC will be available later this year and we'll have the Cortex-A15. What does that buy you? Yeah, roughly half, uh, excuse me, roughly twice the performance at a small power increase. So it will be better performance per watt, more importantly, just better performance and more memory. Because then instead of having four gigabytes per node, we can go up to 16 gigabytes per quad-core SOC. And uh, is it quad A15 or how does it work? Yeah, it's a quad core A15. Is it possible to do even more? One could do even more. Certainly yeah. the A15 architecture allows that. Problem is if you do more than four cores on A15, you would really need to add another memory controller, which adds more cost, more space, more power. And for most of these applications, that's really not, not a good idea. And so we're to try to keep it balanced. Uh, one memory controller for every four cores seems to be a uh, a good good formula. And uh, since in the last months you have announced, uh, some of the partners have been announced, right? Yes. Is it uh, big big names? Well, we've obviously working with yeah. HP. We've been working okay. with HP for a year and a half now. A yeah. uh, very close partnership. Uh, their new Moonshot product it will be available later this year with Calzada technology in, uh, in a pretty attractive package. That would get you up to 180 servers in a roughly 4U, 4U package. So the work you're doing is uh, good for the environment. It is. Um, there's, there's some work being done by an organization in Europe right now to calculate how much carbon ARM servers can save 
can, can, can uh, prevent from being dumped into the atmosphere. And it's pretty substantial as that work gets completed here in the next four or five months. It'll be pretty shocking just how much carbon uh, we can prevent from being loaded into the atmosphere by shifting to more power efficient server environments. So politicians could get involved, but it's not even needed, right? It's just yeah, the act, money. The, yeah, the na natural economics will drive, yeah. will drive this because the data center operators and, and the um, uh, web companies and the hosting companies, they're all going to save money uh, because the technology is less, less expensive, uh, it takes less space, it consumes less power, so the economics will, engine will make it happen. There's no need for additional government incentives. Uh, just the normal business climate will encourage people to adopt this armed technology. And next year, I, I can just guess, but it hasn't been announced. The year after, uh, there's the other announcements, like the A57. Yeah. We'll do, uh, we've announced that we have an A57 license. One of the first companies to get an A57 license. And our A57 product will be available uh, next year. All right, so this is awesome. I just hope that Google and everybody is working with you right now. Uh, we, we're, uh, we're knocking on a lot of doors, to, trying to get a lot of attention. It's a very exciting technology. A lot of people are evaluating it. Uh, a lot of people kicking tires. And more importantly, a lot of companies preparing to deploy this into the production environments in their day.